right through a red light. Here's cross traffic going near collision right there. This guy, the competency behind the wheel, again, very much in question here, has no problem playing bumper cars with the other cars on the road and even bouncing off of the curb a few seconds ago. Doing these speeds with the, with the lack of ability to really steer this vehicle not clear what his experience is with a, with a vehicle this size. All we can tell you at this point is that it's a stolen RV somewhere in Santa Clarita. Again, originated out of the Santa Clarita Valley. Once again, coming up to a red light, going right through the red light, making that right turn. Cars having to j uh, slam on the brakes there. We're going to get our first glip glimpse that might be a dog. There's a dog in the driver's seat on his lap. So he's driving with a dog on his lap. Excuse me, let me just turn this down for a second. Yeah, so we do have a clear visual of a dog in the driver's seat. I couldn't tell if it's a man or a, a woman behind the wheel. But obviously, you can only imagine the number of people that might fit in there. Who knows who else or how many people might be in this vehicle. But again, driving extremely, erra extremely erratically, taking that turn pretty quickly there, and now coming to a stop for the first time at Oakdale and Halstead, making a left turn onto Halstead, and the CHP is continuing to follow behind him very closely here. They cannot let this guy get too far ahead of them. They have to keep up with this suspect to bring this to an end as soon as possible. This is a dangerous weapon that is speeding through the streets of Chatsworth right now. Again, continuing on Halstead, making another right turn here, and again, having a really tough time trying to maneuver this vehicle through these streets. I mean, it's, it's not the type of vehicle that would be very easy to box in in any scenario. You do have the helicopter overhead here, a handful of units right behind him trying to keep up. Again, he's doing manageable speeds now, but you've been watching it once again right over the curb there, taking these turns really, really wide. Uh, and it's just not a vehicle that's capable of maneuvering like that, especially on streets like this. Again, when this was on the, on the, on the freeway, it was one thing. Once he got off the freeway, uh, he was on the 5 freeway, transitioned to the 118 as he made that transition, hit a number of cars at that point, and then you saw the video that you just showed. A minute ago, here comes another head-on collision. Very, very, very close there. I mean, he is just not stopping. He or she is not stopping at any of these red lights. And again, once they go into oncoming lanes of traffic, you have the high risk of a head-on collision with a vehicle this size. The damage potential is extremely extremely serious so you could just tell uh, once again as we're on Plumber Street he's doing well over the speed limit right through another red light once again and uh, they're again doing their best to stay behind him it's tough for any law enforcement agency no matter who you are to follow a vehicle into oncoming lanes of traffic and to do these speeds on surface streets it's just very very difficult but in this case they have no choice they have to follow him as closely as possible and at some point they're going to have to take some uh, what's he okay he looks like he's driving over something okay he just made a turn there and through a parking lot it's a surface street off of plumber street so he's back on tampa avenue pulling into maybe an apartment complex speeding through this parking lot and he's probably hoping to come out the other side it looks like a closed parking lot we'll widen out a little bit to see what this is i think it's an apartment complex if not a commercial parking lot it's a big parking lot he's now weaving his way through this parking lot i don't see any people walking around here you can see only a few cars but he really doesn't care he's going to hit whatever it takes to evade police here and once again making another u-turn right uh, slicing right through that tree there and the windshield just came off so the windshield of that rv just came he ripped the whole side yeah the whole side is missing look at that look at this this is the amount of debris that's falling out of this rv you can see the front right tire it looks like that wheel's almost about to come off or at least the tire is very flat but you can see it wobbling really clearly i don't see anybody else now we have a really clear view inside the vehicle it does not look like from my vantage point that there's anybody near the front except for the driver but you can see he's now or he or she is now driving with no windshield 
very obstructed views, now squeezing through traffic. This large vehicle now squeezing through traffic on Tampa Avenue. Again, we're right along Tampa Avenue in Northridge now, continuing to make our way further south through the San Fernando Valley. Again, we've hit a number of cars. He sliced his vehicle right past that tree. That tree just tore the side of the vehicle to shreds. And now that front wheel, that front axle and that front wheel is about to just fall off. just don't think he's going to be able to maintain control much longer. I mean, this is a difficult vehicle to drive under the best of circumstances on surface streets, let alone in this condition. You can see the dog out the window there, the driver's side window, but he's continuing to drive like a madman through the streets of the San Fernando Valley. We're still in Northridge, southbound on Tampa Avenue, and at least the traffic is dwindling a little bit through this section right here but when there is traffic he is showing no regards just squeezing right through whatever cars he can and just so desperate to get away he's not going to get very far here the he's just going to continue to do more damage Back into oncoming lanes of traffic once again, pulling off, coming to a stop now. He's going to try to put it in reverse. He's putting it in reverse and now pulling onto Lenark Street. No, he's trying to continue. There's the the dog is literally the dog is literally sticking his head out the front windshield, which is completely gone. I don't know how this person is driving. I cannot see his face, but the whole top of the whole top of the of the front cab is basically hanging right in front of the steering wheel. So I don't know how he sees where he's going. He must be crouched over trying to kind of look through there, that little gap that he has to use to drive this vehicle. Again, still speeding. We'll go ahead and throw up our real-time speed tracker. He's got to be doing about 40 miles per hour, upwards of 60 miles per hour on Tampa Avenue. Just to give you an idea, this is a 40 mile per hour speed limit on Tampa Avenue. He is continuing to blow through red lights. Another close call there, and now we have to check and see how far back law enforcement has fallen behind. I don't know if they've been able to keep up with him. You see the LAPD helicopter, but there are no black and whites behind him anymore. They presumably, they may have pulled back. They may have just lost him because of the driving that was just so out of control through some of those intersections. They may have let him get too far ahead here. They may try and catch up with them. I don't think they've canceled the pursuit by any means, but they're certainly tracking from above. And the, the fact that they pulled off has not affected his driving whatsoever. He has not slowed down. He has not eased up whatsoever. Again, into oncoming lanes of traffic with this gi giant RV continuing on Tampa Avenue. You cannot stress enough, if you live in this part of the San Fernando Valley, we're now in Reseda, if you live anywhere near here, you need to pay attention to this and keep the kids inside, keep your pets inside. He could pull into a surface street at any moment. He could pull into a parking lot at any moment, and he's not going to slow down. He is just driving. He or she is driving completely out of control. We're coming up. We're 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 about to come up on Vin, on Ventura on uh, on Ventura Boulevard here. So he's on Victory Boulevard, tr Tampa Tampa Avenue at Victory, going through Victory again. Think he had the red light there, right through the red light. I don't know how much longer those wheels are going to hang on. That axle is really wobbling. It looks like the tire's intact. I don't think it's a flat tire, but the wheel itself is very wobbly, and I just don't know how much further it's going to take him. But you could s he made a right turn. I think you're right, though, David. That may he may not have been able to make that left turn for that reason, and that's why he put it in reverse. He was able to make the right turn there just now. Can we go ahead and push in on the driver's side there? 
we'll try and get a little bit of a better description of the suspect here. Uh, I can't tell just yet whether it's a man or even a female yet, but it looks like it's a female. It's a female driver. I think it's a female driver. Very animated. There might be two dogs. There are two dogs in her lap. I think there's two dogs. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, this is incredible. This is incredible. You have a large RV with a driver who's out of control with two large dogs on her lap continuing to blast through these red lights. Now we're on a surface street here. It's Topham Street uh, just off of uh, off of Tampa. Now coming up on uh, what intersection is that? We're in Woodland Hills now uh, making a left turn, but barely, barely able to make that left turn really, really wide. And the dog... The dog is scared. Oh no! Goodness gracious. The dog is running away. The dog is okay. The dog is running away. There's still another dog on her lap. The, that dog is, is, is walking away. You saw he tumbled out of there. He was very, very scared. He jumped out and is now walking away. Oh no. Oh goodness. Oh goodness. Now putting in a reverse again, putting in a reverse again. This is this is what she pulled on Tampa Avenue again. Has no regard for any of these other cars here. She's just slamming into everything in her way. Slamming into every pole, every tree, every vehicle in her way. That dog was freaked out. Both dogs are freaked out. I think the other dog is still in her lap. But man, what a scary pursuit this is. I have not seen anything like this in maybe ever. She might, I, I don't know why she made that U-turn, but she may, be, she may be trying to go back and get the other dog. She just struck another RV. Oh, another close call, another close call. Again, each of these intersections, she's had the worst luck because all of these intersections have been red lights. So every time she goes through, she doesn't even slow down, and we've seen so many close calls. It's a miracle that we haven't seen more people hurt so far, but she's continuing. Now, Victory Boulevard at Belmar Avenue, continuing down Victory Boulevard. We're going eastbound on Victory, and the speeds are still pretty, still way above the speed limit, I'll tell you that. Again, another red light, right through the red light, trying to make that right turn really wide there, and it looks like she made that one, but once again, we don't see any black and whites anywhere near her, just the LAPD helicopter. Okay, here comes another, is that CHP? Is that CHP or LAPD? So CHP, CHP is now back in pursuit here. They've managed to catch up with her, and we'll see what their what, what their plan is here because spike strips aren't going to do very much, and a pit maneuver, while it would be very unconventional, a, a pit maneuver would be very unconventional. But it would not surprise me if we see an opportunity on an empty street where maybe they could spin it out of control. Again, the circumstances would have to be just right. It would not be normal a normal pit maneuver like we would typically see it would be a very careful decision by the watch commander to give the go-ahead for a pit maneuver in a situation like this but desperate times call for desperate measures and you've got to believe they are considering everything at this point another oh no right into that black sedan okay took a spin and now she's hitting the curb once again so there we have a t-bone crash i don't see the other dog i don't see the other the, the dog's trying to get out again. Yep, yep, okay. And she's still not slowing down for everybody and everything in her way. Serious damage, serious damage to life and property. 
in the San Fernando Valley. If you live anywhere in the Tarzana area is where we are right now. We're back on Tampa. We've been on Tampa before. We're further south now in the San, in the San Fernando Valley here at uh, Bernetta Place. So Tampa Avenue, Bernetta Place, if you live anywhere near here. Uh, we're south of Ventura Boulevard now, making our way up into the hills. Oh, no! Oh, my goodness! Ahead! Uh, oh, my God. Right into the tree, slammed right into a silver sedan there that was pulling into a driveway, and the pursuit has now come to a crash ending at Tampa Avenue and Wells Drive. Tampa Avenue and Wells Drive. LAPD now speeding into position here. She's now foot bailed. She's running from the RV. It's unbelievable. She's running down Tampa Avenue, and she's, I think she must know somebody in this neighborhood, maybe just trying to get into the stranger's front yard. Here comes CHP, and she is being taken down by CHP. Wow. Wow. Oh, looks like an older ge older gentleman on the ground. With ambulances on the way out here. LA City Fires on the way out here once again. Tampa Avenue at Wells Drive. This was a gentleman who was in the process. It looked like trying to pull into this driveway, and he is seriously hurt after taking quite a hit. You can see the damage on the rear end. I mean, she was going full speed as he was pulling into the driveway. He did a 360 and obviously is very hurt. Now he is just one of several vehicles. It was just two blocks north of here that we saw another nasty crash. And uh, we'll try and get a glimpse of that in just a second. But it looks like, uh, it looks like He's going to be okay. He's got some minor injuries. Looks like he's suffering from some, some uh, arm pain, and I'm sure his back took a good hit. But he is sitting up and waiting for somebody to arrive here. He is obviously a bit stunned. You could see that that RV slammed right into a tree in front of this house. So uh, this is a, a, a neighborhood just south of Ventura. Tampa, Tampa Avenue at Wells Drive. Again, LA City Fire on the way out here. You can see a lot of blood on the ground. There's the dog. That might be paw. Those are, those are paw prints, and it looks like she's ble she's bleeding from the nose clearly. He's bleeding. Is his face bleeding? A few blocks over was that black car, right? It was on Tampa? Too far back? Okay. Here comes an LAPD officer. She's going to attend to him. He's, his shoulder, yeah, he, he took a really good hit.
Oh, is that Rob? Okay. All right, let's go to it. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Fire truck right there at the intersection. I yeah, it's at Ventura, Ventura from Ventura Boulevard, Ventura Boulevard at Tampa. Right there. So I don't, yeah. You can see the heavy front end damage. Let's go ahead and, and tilt up a little bit there. You can see the heavy front end damage. It, yeah. I think that Honda, I think that Honda was turning on that tur the Honda was turning on to Tampa I believe when yeah it was turning on to Tampa and then the RV slammed right into the front end yep now the, yeah this was pulling into the driveway he was pulling into the driveway she clipped the trunk and he did a full 180 spin into that tree and then she slammed head on into the tree next door so this white car here was pulling into the driveway when she came flying down Taking another look at it here. Wells. Keep it up. Okay.
I was just I was just about to say the same thing, Colleen. You know, we followed this. It started in the Santa Clarita Valley on the freeway, jumped onto the 118, and then service trees throughout the remainder of the pursuit, mostly in the San Fernando Valley. And the driving was consistently crazy the entire time. It's a miracle that we're not dealing with even more property damage and more loss of life here. Right now, we're dealing with two separate collisions that result in some injuries here. There were a number of other collisions that were much less serious. There was lots of property damage. We saw some trees taken down, some poles, some other vehicles that uh, definitely took quite a hit, but nothing like the last two pursuit, the last two crashes in the final 30 seconds of this pursuit. One at Tampa Avenue and Ventura Boulevard, and the other right here at Tampa Avenue and Wells Drive, uh, just up in the hills slightly, just, just south of Ventura Boulevard, before the RV went crashing into what looks like another tree that finally brought this pursuit to an end. So we've got at least two situations where paramedics are checking these folks out to see the extent of the injuries. The woman herself is still sitting on the front steps of that other home. It looked like she was about to just jump the fence. Obviously, she had no idea who lived there, was literally trying to jump the fence with the dog. She didn't. That didn't work out for her, and they took her down right away, right on Tampa Avenue. But you could tell LAPD and LA City Fire are now fanning out across the San Fernando Valley to tally up the damage and make sure that everybody else is okay. I could tell you she had a number of parked cars, and we don't know if anybody was in any of those cars either. So still lots of assessments to take place here. L.A. City Police and Fire both actively fanning out across Reseda, Tarzana, and uh, Chatsworth. Uh, okay, so here, here, this looks like it might be a family member. This looks like it might be a family member. I saw him on the phone just a few minutes ago. He picked up the phone as they were waiting for the fire department. He picked up the phone to make a phone call. And this looks like he probably lives in the neighborhood here. And this might be family that is now arriving. You can see L.A. City Fire. They're going to take good care of him. I think he suffered some back injuries and some shoulder pain. It looks like he was clearly pointing to his shoulder. He might have even... Uh, might have even uh, hit his nose on the steering wheel but that airbag probably went off and he's a little bit stunned as well so they will take care of him but you could see uh just a, a catastrophic pursuit here hopefully he's going to be okay but i just have never seen anything like that ever right yeah I'm looking, this, this light force did not have an ambulance in tow here, but I can tell you this fire station is responding to a number of different locations uh, in this vicinity here. So I can tell you the intersection that's uh, severely affected, while well, traffic is not the heaviest, over on Tampa and Ventura, the intersection is partially shut down, and there are a number of fire trucks over there. I don't even see an ambulance over there either. It's just south of the 101 freeway next to the overpass. But you could see the heavy, heavy damage that a Honda, I think it's a Honda Accord, that really took the brunt, the front end took the brunt of the, of the damage. I think he was coming out onto Tampa Avenue. He also went spinning around and... Uh, I don't see any sign of that driver. They may have already taken him out of here while we were paying attention to this other ending, this crash ending up on the other side of uh, Ventura. But uh, you can see they clearly have the southbound lanes of Tampa shut down as police uh, try and clear that intersection. And again, a number of other crews uh, on the way out here as well. I don't see, I'm looking, I don't see any other ambulances in the vicinity, but I'm sure, I'm sure they're trying to make their way over here.
I mean, you're talking about a, a, a vehicle that size with that kind of horsepower. It could have easily also been a truck or a bus or any number of other heavy vehicles. How do you get something like that off the road? You know, we've seen situations similar to this um, in other parts of the country. I remember one in Denver years ago. There was a tank and a school bus in Miami uh, many years ago. But uh, this was a situation where the only thing that comes to my mind would have been under the ideal conditions if they would have encountered those conditions would have been some type of a creative pit maneuver to force the vehicle to lose control and bring it to an end similar to the way it did but in a more controlled fashion so uh that's the i mean that's about the only thing you can do they did their best to keep up with her she was driving extreme speeds through these residential neighborhoods including a number of parking lots thank goodness there was nobody walking through those parking lots i think it's worth reiterating my phone is lighting up right now with tons of people wanting to know how the dogs are doing and we can say that the one dog that jumped out was able to run away from the run away from from the rv it was a, it was definitely speeding at that point so the dog literally fell or jumped out of a speeding rv on tampa avenue and then was able to get away and then the other dog uh it's hard to watch it's really hard to watch the other thing that we could say about the second dog is that he appeared to be okay as well. He managed to stay on the RV till the finish, to the, till the, till the wild end of this pursuit. And then when she jumped out of the RV, he came out of the driver's seat as well. And he is now in the custody of LAPD. So both dogs appear to be doing just fine from our vantage point. Of course, we are going to work to get you a, a more accurate condition on them. And of course, everybody else involved here. But... Uh, I just am still just stunned by what we've seen here tonight. It's just an incredible pursuit that covered a lot of real estate and as wild and crazy and dangerous and damaging as it was, I got to tell you, it could have been even worse. It could have been so much worse.
Oh. Oh boy. I guess not. No, they're going to put her in the ambulance, and uh, I agree. It's going to make it even more challenging, I think, to uh, – is she – she's holding on to her stomach, obviously. I'm sorry, David, one more time. Um, you know, there were at least a half a dozen that we saw. Uh, most of them were minor. Uh, there was a couple with poles. There was at least one or two trees taken out. Um, and again, a number of parked cars. She also squeezed through along Tampa Avenue. She also, I'm sorry, she also squeezed through a number of cars when she hit a little bit of traffic. I think probably took off a, a few rearview mirrors and that type of thing. Um, and, and sideswiped a number of vehicles. The craziest collision actually came with a, uh, a, a tree, or was it a pole, I forget, that took off the whole front right section of the RV. It was a palm tree that just tore off the siding. And that's when things got really crazy because she wasn't really able to see out the windshield anymore. The windshield came flying off in that, in that crash. And at that point, she had, yeah, the dog is scared, but... But the dog at least is, is, yeah. Yeah, Animal Control was actually able to wait, make their way over here pretty quickly, and the dog is now in the custody of Animal Control. The driver of the RV has now been taken into police custody, and she is now on an ambulance on the way to the hospital. And finally, an ambulance has arrived for this poor gentleman who took quite a hit as he was trying to avoid, the, avoid being struck by the RV on Tampa Avenue, uh, and I think as an evasive move, tried to pull into this driveway. 
uh, but took quite a hit. You can see the heavy rear end damage there, and he suffered some uh, substantial injury as well. He's now being taken to the hospital, and his family is down there as well. He probably lives in the neighborhood from what we can gather, but now two people being transported, including the suspect, a dog in custody. Still no word on where the other dog is, and we're still trying to find out where the driver of that Honda Accord is over on Ventura and Tampa, where that driver took an incredible hit as he was trying to cross Tampa Avenue. So a number of major crashes in the last minute of this pursuit and a number of law enforcement and fire personnel trying to find those other collisions, the more minor crashes that we saw earlier on. But uh, a lot of damage, again, can't stress enough, this could have been much, much worse. Yeah. You're right. I mean, there were people, I mean, there were so many opportunities, especially in that parking lot. They just went through a few parking lots and sped through the parking lots. I was shocked that there was nobody walking around because she wasn't stopping. There was no sign of brake lights. There was no sign of slowing down. Each intersection, she went full speed through those red lights. We saw quite a few close calls. So to say nothing of the really close calls that we did see and a number of drivers having to take evasive measures to avoid a major crash, um, but there was just no attempt whatsoever. She was on a, uh, on a mission to just, she was flooring it. I mean, she was going about as fast as this RV could possibly go at some points. And, uh, and even when the RV wouldn't respond the way she wanted to, she would take those really wide turns right into oncoming lanes of traffic. And there were so many opportunities for head-on collisions and uh, even more serious crashes. So thankfully, um, it looks like this gentleman will be treated and taken care of. And we're, we're, again, we're trying to get word on that other driver. But other than that, it looks like, uh, you know, no other major loss of life from what we could tell. Well, I couldn't believe it. You know, we were listening to the police.
police radios as we were approaching the 118 freeway where she was making those, where she was traveling westbound when we first arrived uh, at, at Tampa Avenue. It was the 118 and Tampa Avenue. And as she was traveling down the 5 freeway and on the 118 freeway, we were not aware that this was an RV. I was expecting to find, you know, another car or, a, or you know, whatever, a motorcycle. But then we saw this RV making that U-turn on Tampa Avenue. I wasn't even sure if that was it until it started crashing into all of those cars. So that's another crash site, by the way. Uh, but aside from these two here, that was actually the maybe the most serious crash uh, where she hit, and it was like bumper cars. She was just moving vehicles out of the way, pushing it in reverse. She did a three-point turn, or maybe a four or five-point turn in that intersection, and then just sped off and hit a number of cars in lanes, a number of parked cars. And with a vehicle that size, she was able to move a lot of other vehicles out of the way. There were parked cars that just, she just pushed onto the curb. And at one point, she was bouncing off of the curbs, hitting trees, hitting light poles. And uh, I would not be surprised, as you mentioned, David, we will find out, obviously, at some point, uh, if she was under the influence of something, of something. our community as possible going to steal um, a bus or an RV and take it to the next level and if that's the case then we need to be prepared for it yeah you're right I mean uh, you know we've seen some uh, incredible tactics especially here in Southern California it wasn't more than maybe I don't know five four or five years ago in San Bernardino there was a pursuit that was so dangerous it was on the freeway I remember it was on the on the uh, 15 freeway I believe and they literally shot the driver from the helicopter right. that was Remember I mean that, that? was a, a, an extreme yes. example of a vehicle that was out of control they had to bring it to an end and they literally shot right through the driver's window from the San Bernardino Sheriff's helicopter so when they you know the, 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 they have as we know, lots of technology and lots of tools at their disposal. When it comes to a pursuit, you have to take the public safety into consideration first and foremost. And that's what they always tell us. That is the number one concern. So when we see an RV like this speeding through city streets, and then we talk about how there's no black and whites right behind it, that's because they are going to escalate the situation if they continue to drive the way she's driving. So it takes really skilled officers behind the wheel to keep up with a vehicle, just to keep up with the vehicle. And then you have to consider, how do you bring it to an end? How do you de-escalate the situation and get this vehicle off the road? And the only thing I could think of, I kept thinking of in this situation, especially during stretches of Tampa Avenue and some other side streets where there were really, you know, not a lot of, there wasn't a lot of collateral damage, you know, immediately in the vicinity would have been maybe, maybe uh, a pit maneuver where you just side, you know, just fishtail the RV and let it, you know, crash into something, but at least bring it to a stop. No kidding. Well, Chris, we, we do know that law enforcement will look at this. They will dissect every part of this. They obviously have video. They'll probably be watching uh, local media coverage as well to see what they could have done differently. Uh, but this is definitely one of those pursuits that they will probably learn a great deal from David talking about it. If somebody wants to steal another large vehicle, what's to stop them? How do you stop them? How do you keep people safe? Um, but again, this one, miraculously seeing that uh, I we know that at least one person was very badly injured we know one of the dogs was injured but it could have been so much worse and again you're watching our live coverage as we uh, continue to try to explore exactly what happened what led to this uh, chase to begin with and we do have our reporters uh, fanning out to try to get some answers yeah so we are gonna wrap up our coverage the ambulance has taken the last victim victim away uh, as I mentioned we have 
uh, Eileen and Josh both on this from the ground. Of course, Chris Christie in the air. We're going to try to get as many of these answers as possible. And yes, we will not forget about the dogs either. But we need to get to the bottom of what, how this started. Who is this person? And what was going on? Why didn't she stop? Uh, and, and we'll also tally the incredible damage from this unprecedented pursuit. So we hope you join us for Eyewitness News at 11 o'clock tonight. And if need be, we'll give you updates throughout the night and watch us digitally as well as on all our social media platforms. We'll give you whatever we have. This has been an incredible day. Chris Christie, what a great job you've done. Thank you, David. Good night, everybody.